All right, so we've covered our 1.7 and 1.8, talking about prefixes and equalities and writing conversion factors. And now basically we want to go through some problem solving. So this is section uh, 1.9. I believe. Let me check. Yes, it is. Some other names um, that <clears throat> your book, I mean, this problem solving is really vague. Um, some other names that uh, we typically use for these are talking about converting units or dimensional analysis. So if you're getting help from someone else or when you're using the online, uh, the Sapling Online Learning Center, or if you're consulting another book, they may, um, you might want to look under these terms for more help. And problem solving is uh, fairly vague. So basically what I want to do is we're just going to basically work through uh, a number of examples of how to convert our units. So first off, we want to know how many feet are in two yards. Well, most of you, I'm going to guess, already guessed six. Like, hey, that's easy, right? Well, awesome, good for you. What I'd like to do with an example like this, where you probably already know that this is six feet, I want to show you the math that you did in terms of conversion factors and converting those units so that you can see how the math works in a very simple example. So when we get to the more complicated ones, you can more easily apply that math. So first off, uh, the conversion factor that you used was that you know in one yard we have three feet. Uh, technically, your book calls this an equality. Remember, the conversion factor um, really is where we'd have one yard per three feet or three feet per one yard. So this is the conversion factor, the quality that you use in order to do this calculation. You said you had two yards. You know for every one yard you have three feet. So you have two yards. You have to have six feet. To do this mathematically, what we want to do is you want to start with the value that you're given. Okay. So we are going to start with value given. Okay. Not an equality. So we want to start with our two yards. So we're going to say two yards now, uh, when I do conversion factors of this dimensional analysis, I use what I call a railroad, where I put kind of just these, the, the railroad ties, I don't know, make up something. And I want to convert my units from yards to feet. So yards start in my numerator, so I want to put yards down in my denominator so that those units cancel out. And then I'm using this uh, conversion factor, this equality, so I can move from yards to feet. And then I just fill in my equality. Okay. So for every one yard, I have three feet. Uh, how, where these conversion factors come in is hopefully you've seen that I'm using this conversion factor, the second one we wrote, to fill in there. And then my units 
my yards are divided by yards. Anything divided by itself is one. Then, in order to do this calculation, we're going to multiply across and divide down. Okay, so we have two times three divided by one gives us our six feet. Now, to show it, you what this looks like in a typical math problem, some people like fractions better than this um, railroad system. Okay. I'll show you that. Basically, we start with our two yards, and we're going to multiply that by our conversion factor. We have one yard per three feet, and we get to the same value here are six feet. And these are two just different visualizations of what's going on. Mathematically, they're all the same. We're still going to multiply across and divide bottom. Um, so use whatever um, works for you or whatever you've been taught. And, um, I really like this railroad system. It's really easy to see what's on the top and what's on the bottom. So throughout the quarter, I'm going to be using this railroad system. And, if you have any troubles with it or any questions, uh, feel free to post to the discussion forum, send me a message, um, send me a text, or send me an email, and I can address that as needed. All right. Let's do another example. So let's look at how many kilometers are in 1607.3 meters. So in this case, we're converting between our metric units. Okay? So we're wanting to kind of start with our 1607.3 meters, and we want to convert this and figure out how many kilometers that is. So we need basically our metric equality. We want to know our equality between meters and kilometers, okay, or kilometers. Potato, potato. So for our metric equality, remember, we're getting this uh, from this table here. Um, also, oh, I forgot to mention, um, this is from the old version of the book. Uh, this is now table, goes by table number eight, just as a heads up. So that's table number eight. Uh, it looks exactly, the, well, the colors are a little different, but same, same idea, same concept. So we want to look up our kilo. Our value of our kilo here is the 10 to the 3, or 1,000 if you like that better, whatever works for you. So remember, uh, there's a place we always want to stick our 1. Okay, Where does that 1 go? Hopefully you've said and screamed at your computer, the 1 goes with the prefix. Okay, So the 1 goes with the kilo. Then over here, we're going to replace the kilo portion with its value. So we're replacing that with 10 to the 3. So we want to do our calculation now. Okay. Remember, we don't want to start with our equality. We always want to start with a number that was given. In this case, we have our uh, 1607. So we'll start with that. 0.3 meters, set up our conversion factor, our railroad. We have meters in the top, so we want to put meters in the denominator. We're using this equality, so we're going to be able to convert from meters to kilometers. 
So our one goes with the kilo, 10 to the three with the meters. We can plug this into our calculator. And again, how you plug in this 10 to the 3 is going to be different depending on your calculator and depending on what buttons you have available to you. So I'm going to put this 1607.3. I want to multiply across, so I'm going to times 1. Okay. I'm including that just so that you guys can see how to use the railroad. So I have 1607.3 times 1. And then I'm going to divide down. So I'm going to divide by 10. I'm going to use my caret key here to get my exponent. So I have 1607.3 times 1 divided by 10 to the 3. And my calculator is going to give me 1.6073. So 1. 0.6703 kilometers. Okay. Now remember from the previous videos, this is our calculator answer. Okay. Our calculator is logical, it is smart, but is not intelligent. We are intelligent, so we want to cut this off to our appropriate number of sig figs. So we are multiplying and dividing here, so we're going for the lowest number of sig figs. So we want to look to basically each value that's used. Okay. So our 1, 6, 7, and 3 are significant because they're all non-zero. The 0 in between the 6 and the 7 is significant because it's between two non-zero digits. So this has 5 sig figs. Whenever we convert in the metric system, okay, this is a ratio. It is not a measured value. It is something that is exact. Okay. So this is exact. And if you remember, uh, recall from the previous videos, whenever we have an exact number, that means it has infinite sig figs. Okay, so it's never going to limit our answer. So we need five significant figures in our answer. So our one, six, seven, zero, three, those are all significant. So I'll write it down just because that's what I usually do. We have 1.6703 kilometers. All right. Most of the time when we're um, for this class, um, we consider most uh, all of our conversion factors to be exact, but that's not the case. Um, your book doesn't do a very good job of explaining that to you. Um, so I'll show you the table. Um, and again, the table number has probably changed. I'm trying to find it here for you. Yeah, it looks a little different. This is now table 11 in the new edition of the book. And whether or not you have the paperback or the hardback, um, it's probably going to be table 11 for both of those. And some of these are exact, some of these are not exact. Okay. Um, for myself in this class, um, basically you can consider the equalities to be exact. Okay. Um, and if they're not exact, they shouldn't limit your calculation. So in other words, the value that you start with um, should have fewer sig figs than the values in your equality. Um, so when you're working through exams for on Moodle, don't worry about um, sig figs and equalities. Go ahead and consider them exact. On Sapling Learning Site, uh, I believe they also have the same policy um, that pretty much the value that you start with is going to limit your sig figs, not the equality. Um, if you have or run into any problems with that, please let me know so that I can address it and uh, eliminate any confusion about that. All right, that pretty much wraps up. Those are two 
um, pretty standard examples for looking at converting units. Okay. This is um, a section that you're going to want to devote a lot of time and practice and effort to. If you go to your book, the Q&P section for this um, one is very extensive, so you're going to want to work through that. You're also, there are lots of examples um, with tutorials, with help on the Sapling Learning site to go through, um, working uh, within the metric system, working within the U.S. system, also working, combining those two. Um, so going from, say, milliliters to cups. Okay. Um, you basically want to devote a lot of time and practice to this. There's also some extra practice. There's another um, kind of worksheet that I've posted, and I also will post solutions to that so you can practice that. Um, you are going to want to really get unit conversion under your belt because basically throughout the rest of the quarter, um, all I'm going to be doing is giving you new conversion factors to use. Okay, new equalities. So as long as you get this down now, it will help you make sense of pretty much the rest of this quarter. So section 1.9 is very, very critical to your understanding in chemistry.